Tournament action is just about underway. The road to Dayton is about to go as Elida and Kenton have the tip. It's going to go out of bounds. We're going to have a jump ball, and we're going to do it all over again. I don't know if I've ever seen that. It's, a, it's the right call. I just don't know how often that happens where both players hit it at the same time out of bounds. Still be controlled by Elida. They're going to go quickly. This one's going to get poked away, though. That Kenton defense quickly coming out to play, ripped away by Gabby Weatherill. And then we're going to have an early foul by Bella Lopez as we take a look at the starting lineup for both of these teams. First for the Atlanta Bulldogs, they're going to start number three, Leo Ramirez. Number five, Bella Lopez. Number 10, Addison Freeman. Number 21, Alexis Ward. Number 22, Peyton Kuhn. For the Kenton Wildcats, they will start number 12, Gabby Weatherwell. Number 13, Allie Harple. Number 21, Sadie Laura B. Number 30, Macy Heckethorn. And number 32, Olivia Milton. Basketball goes out of bounds. We'll stay with the Wildcats. 3-2 look from the Elida defense. Coming out with zone pressure. The weather works the basketball around towards the top of the key. Hands it off to Nolte. As you saw, the defense on the front part of that zone come out. Give her a little bit of a challenge just to get rid of it. Weatherall tries to go to the inside. Great defense by Elida as Alexis Ward is right there for the tie-up. The basketball will stay with the Wildcats on the jump ball. If this 40, first 46 seconds of the game is any indication of how this is going to go, we're in for a physical, quick game. By quick, I mean pace, not a, not a fast game that ends quickly. Allie Harple with the high lob. Gets it into the hands of Nolte. She's going to pull it out, let everybody get set. Long three-pointer on its way. That one rattled about halfway down before it came out. Offensive rebound, though, comes down to the Wildcats. And the first points of the game are going to belong to, I believe that was Macy Heckethorn down low. A three-pointer for Elida on the other side. Great answer by Peyton Coon as the offenses get up going quickly. Yeah, good shot right there on the first offensive possession for Elida. And for Kenton on that first basket, it actually went to Sadie Lorby. So that was her first two of the night. And as Elida still has the 3-2 lead here with a minute and a half off the game clock. Another old taking the basketball out of bounds for the Wildcats of Kent. You saw it on that first possession from Kent. Elida knows that they ha that Kent has some shooters. They got to mark them on the outside. I thought you know, when that basketball left her hands, it was going to be good. But then even marking those outside, you have to take care of the interior as that offensive rebound came up big. Out of bounds, though, as Weatherall was trying to run that baseline, gets forced out, and the basketball is going to go back to Elida. Yeah, nice job going baseline right there. Just kind of lost track of where she was on the court. But I like the early emphasis on attacking the rim and getting to the baseline for Kenton. Extra pass down into the corner for Ramirez. She's going to move around, tried from a long pass, looking for Addison Freeman, but just out of her reach. So going to be a turnover for the Bulldogs. Going to go back to Kent. Nolting brings it up for Kent. Look, still looking at that 2-3 zone from Elida. Nice find on the inside. But Heckethorn had gotten tied up, had to get rid of it, loses the basketball. As Elida is going to come down, trying to go right to the inside. But Peyton Coon's pass was kicked. And so that's what the stoppage is for, and it will stay with Elida. Yeah, Coach Jenkins for Elida, telling your team to just kind of settle down a little bit, kind of running down the court. Obviously, that first possession was a, a good look at three, but it was a quick shot, and they're kind of running really quickly here. Another three-pointer from Peyton Coon. She is on fire, two from two, from almost the exact same spot. Yeah, Kuhn fires up 6.3 per game. Only averages 19% from out there, but right now doing a really nice job knocking it in early. Larrabee has this one taken away. Another jump ball as Alexis Ward gets another tie-up. This time the possession error does favor Elida. We are going to have a timeout by Kent. We will step aside and be back on WOSA.
Welcome back. Tonight's scoreboard is presented by Web Insurance Agency, serving Lima and Allen County for more than 100 years, with offices in downtown Lima and the Bluffton. 524 left to go here in the opening quarter. Elida out to a 6-2 lead thanks to two three-pointers by Peyton Kuhn. As Kenton took the timeout, wanted to talk about things, try to get the defense set up, make sure that it, I bet at a bare minimum, someone marked Peyton Kuhn on this possession. Yeah, Kuhn's done a nice job getting into the corner. That pass just a little bit over the head of Bella Lopez, but Kuhn, really quick trigger as well. As soon as she gets that ball, she has space. She's been able to knock it down. So that's the second time that we've seen those long passes from Elina just out of the outstretched hands of its intended target. See if Kent can take advantage. Nolte working against Lopez. As this one just out of the reach of Weatherill. Kuhn on the floor trying to tie it up. Gonna have a rollover. Somehow it ends up in the hands of Nolting and a hard foul by Alexis Ward. She'll pick it up and Olivia Nolting's gonna go to the free throw line to shoot two. Quite a scramble right there. Both teams getting on the floor, working hard. That was a really hard foul as well, but certainly a play on the ball. It looked like she was making an honest attempt to block the shot. Yeah, Alexis Ward was coming fast. It looked like she had a beat on that basketball. Nolting able to get rid of it just before Alexis got there. Couldn't get it to go down, but she's going to shoot two. And her first is no good. It looks like she's bleeding. So we're going to have a stop as Olivia Nolting is going to have to go over to the bench area. She has some blood. Big cheers for the trainer from Elida. So we will have a stoppage here for this blood as it, it is coming from the shooter. So she's going to have to try to pack the nose up a little bit. And it looks like they're going to let a sub come in to wow. do the shooting, it looks like, as they continue to work on Olivia Nolting on the sideline here. So number 14, Kinsey Spring coming into the game, has to immediately go over to the free throw line to shoot the second free throw. Kinsey's shot is up, and it is no good. Tough spot for Kinsey Spring. Offensive rebound comes down to Ken as Laura B was able to get the shot up and had it blocked. After all that, the ball ended up into Elida's hands. Nice job finding Bella Thorne, who is running the floor, as she gets it to go for two. There's another example of some of the things that Addison Freeman is capable of. She grabbed that ball, got down the court, and then made a really nice lead pass to Lopez, put it right where she was going to be, and made the layup nice and easy. So good to see Olivia Nolte coming back into the game. Has a couple um, of things up her nose trying to stop that bleeding, but that's not going to stop her from coming into this game to try to help her team. Harper triggering the inbounds. Finds Hecathorn, shot goes up, no good. Rebound comes down to Freeman. Another long pass up to Lopez. Lopez on the other side of the basket gets that one to go down. As Bella Lopez doing an excellent job of running the floor, getting open. And a great job by Addison Freeman to find it. So it looks we're having like some more trouble with the scoreboard here. And during our first game tonight, there were some issues with the scoreboard as far as getting the score to change. Thought they had had that fixed as they had to reset the scoreboard. But some of the same issues as the score should read 10 to 2 in favor of Elida, but on our scoreboard here in the gym showing 6 to 2. So the official's over, just making sure everything is set, making sure that the official scorebook um, has the correct score. Yeah, it looks like they're going to try to reset it completely here. So Bella Thorne back to back. Layups on runouts fed by Addison Freeman. And that came after back to back three pointers by Peyton Kuhn as he lined out to the eight point lead. With Kenton right now having a little bit of a hard time. You know, they want looks like they want to try to get things going to the inside. We know they can shoot from behind the arc, but they tried to force the issue, go inside, get some easy looks at it. And that Elida defense is having none of it here in the early going. They're coming out in a 2 2 1 press. Trying to create some turnovers in the backcourt. Hackathorn gives it over to Nolting. Nolting looking for where to go with the basketball. Long pass. Able to gather it in with Harper. Great save. And it's going to go out of bounds. 
they're going to say it was actually, they're going to say last touch by Weatherall from our vantage point. It actually looked like it had gone out on Kate Coon. And you can see the Kent bench not happy with that call. Well, the referee was right next to Weatherall right there and said it just took a slight touch off of her. He didn't, you know, it, it, even if it barely touches you. Addison Freeman from the corner, long pass. That one ended up in the hands of Ramirez. Ramirez going to pull it back out. Finds Freeman down in the corner. Freeman, that shot is off. Ward trying to get through the rebound. Going to have another tie. Ward just takes it away. Hecathorn trying to have good position down low. And after all that, Weatherill takes it. They're going to have a foul. We'll see who they call this one on. And it's going to go on Alexis Ward. It'll be her second, team second. Tough, tight defense there. Ward's going to have to take a seat with those two fouls under Mitchell, the 6'2 freshman, checking in. 349 left to go here in the opening quarter. Kenton still facing that full court press from Elida. Ramirez working against Nolte. Nolte able to get by her. Kicks it over to Weatherall. Weatherall. Almost had that one taken away to Hecathorn, but able to gather it back in. Elida doing a good job making sure that Kent doesn't have a lot of space out there behind the arc as they work through this zone. Weatherill goes to drive, gets cut off, has to go through the double team. It looks like she might have been poked in the face. No whistle yet as Weatherill just tries to get the basketball off of the Elida player. It looks like she may have needed a second. So good heads up play by Weatherill. You can't fault Addison Friedman for going for that one as Weatherill might have gotten poked in the face somewhere. And with no whistle, you have to play on. A good heads up play by Weatherall, though, to make sure that they maintain possession. And that's going to be a five second violation. So right now, Kenton just a little bit out of sorts offensively. Yeah, Elite is doing a really nice job, though, moving quickly on defense, not creating or not leaving any seams for Kenton to run through to get to the basket to collapse the defense. It's just been a really nice defensive performance from Elida to start this game. Nice read. Sadie Lorabi, and we're going to have a backcourt violation. So Kenton right now, even when they're able to get the turnover, get something going their way, right now can't sustain it, and they turn it right back over to the Bulldogs. That's another one where the player needs to establish possession in the front court before she catches a pass from the front court. So even if you're across the line on a jump, if you catch the ball and you still haven't touched in the front court, it's going to be over and back. So here's Ramirez. Gets it over to Freeman. Freeman looking down low. Gets it to Mitchell. Just off of her hands, though. Ends up back in the hands of Kent. Gabby Weatherill brings it up for the Wildcats. Works against Lopez. Gets cut off into the corner. Has to get rid of it. And this one is going to go out of bounds. Last touch by Emma Mitchell. Again, great defense from Elida. Just moving nicely, playing the passing lanes. Being big, right? They're keeping their hands up so that it's really tough to pass around and over the top. Nolting left all alone for three. That one's going to be no good. As you see Peyton Coon come up with the rebound. And Addison Freeman will bring it up for the Lady Dogs. Coon, a little bit of a hesitation, gets cut off as she tried to go baseline. And now we're going to have a foul as Allie Harper cut off Peyton Coon. This one's going to go out of bounds. It'll be Harple's first, team's first. Leah Ramirez waiting for the offense to get set. She's just going to hand it off to Lopez now as she's going to have the offense get back in position before they run their offensive set here. So that there might be a little bit of confusion on the Elida player, so we're going to have a timeout as Coach Jenkins wants to make sure everybody's on the same time, or on the same page, excuse me. Just a 30-second timeout, so we'll keep it here. 10 to 2. You saw Elida get out to that fast start. Kenton settling in a little bit here on defense, but it's been the offense that just can't quite get going here in the early going. Yeah, I've been incredibly impressed by the Elida defense and the way that they've been able to, like I just said, make themselves big, keep their arms up in the air. They're moving their feet. They're, they're making the inside, the key, really condensed. And so Kenton is going to be forced to make some shots from outside. This isn't really a team that shoots well from three-point range, just 26%.
And so if Elida can keep this up, they're going to make it really tough for Kenton to score. And I know it seems like eight points isn't a big lead, but when your opponent's playing defense like Elida is, it's going to be really tough to close the gap. Yeah, these are two very evenly matched teams. You know, they each, they can, they each got uh, players that can handle the ball very well. They have girls that can play on the inside. They have size. They have strength. These, these teams right now are very equally matched, but it's the Elida offense getting the better of that Kenton defense right now. Now Lopez, and Elida is going to quickly try to move the ball around. Looks like they're trying to find Freeman. Lob on the inside, Freeman rips it away. And we're going to have another hard contact as Gabby Weatherill is getting right into the mix. She took a hard shot that time from Freeman. And Freeman, <coughs> excuse me, is going to pick up the foul. It's one against Freeman, four against Elida so far. And a lot of times when you play aggressive defense like this, you're prone to uh, a little bit to being a little bit over aggress aggressive, excuse me. Hecathorn with the shot from the lane, and that one is good. Macy Hecathorn with her first two points of the night. And that's a good look from inside as well. Ramirez pulls it back up around midcourt, gets it over to Lopez. Lopez lurks around that right side. And just at that time, I think Lopez got herself a little tied up. She faked the pass to the right, went back to the left, and it was just off the mark. She was trying to find Freeman. JoJo Knight checking in for Elida. Still working on that scoreboard. It's 10 4. Not sure scoreboard may just continue to be an issue tonight, but as long as the uh, official working the scorebook down there at the table has the correct score, they'll still be able to figure it out. Nolting gets it over. Three-point shot on its way. That one's going to be no good. Freeman rips down the rebound, and she's going to go with the full head of steam. Works against Nolte, gets it to Lopez. Lopez with the shot. That one's good. Bella Lopez with six points here in the quarter. Scores 12 to 4. They have 12 to 2, but there we go. Larrabee has that one rejected, kicked back out. Three pointer on its way as Hecathorn can't connect. Another offensive rebound. That one no good. Freeman has another rebound. JoJo Knight for two. That one's good. As Elida right now has things humming on offense. All led by Addison Freeman in transition, finding open players. Harple shot, bounces off the front of the rim. It takes a big bounce off the, and ends up going behind the backboard. So it's going to go back to Elida with 30.7 seconds left to go here in the quarter. We'll see if Elida tries to hold for the last shot. And it looks like they will. Addison Freeman just watching at the official, just waiting to see if he starts the count. Now he has, so she's going to have to go somewhere with it. Drops it off to Lopez. Lopez tried to save it before the over and back violation. Coach Jenkins frustrated with that as things were lined up for, uh, for Elida to take that last shot. But now Kenton's going to have an opportunity here. Yeah, they're just getting a little bit lazy with those passes up top. We've seen a couple of them just that they're off the mark. They're a little bit too hard. And then you're going to have a foul as JoJo Knight is going to get called for her first. She's going to get the reach against Olivia Nolting. So, not a great series here in this last 30 seconds as you had the turnover and then a foul with six seconds left to go. Yeah, the scoreboard reads three fouls. I've got them for five. We'll see if that's an issue as well, that they can get solved. There, the five is up. Long three-point try is going to be no good. Rebound comes down to Elida, and that is going to bring the first quarter to a close. After one, the Bulldogs on top of Kent, 14 to four. We'll step aside and be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Our scoreboard is presented by Webb Insurance Agency, serving Lima and Allen County for more than 100 years with offices in downtown Lima and Bluffton. Welcome back to Bluffton High School. Sectional semifinal action underway here as the second quarter gets going between the Elina Bulldogs and the Kenton Wildcats. I'm Nate Garlock alongside Evan Skilleter. And Elina is on top, currently 14-4 on the back of some great 
uh, play by Addison Freeman, not just scoring, as she actually was held off the scoreboard, but so much facilitating for her, and she draws so much attention and opens things up for her teammates. Yeah, defensively, she's done a really nice job as well. <laughs> you see her knock the ball away right there. She has a couple steals. She's done a really nice job getting out in transition off of rebounds. And again, sometimes the best players on the team are not the ones that score the most points. In this case, the best player on the floor for Elida hasn't scored any points, but her teammates have done a really nice job as well, running in transition, finishing open looks. Araby does a great job getting to the rim that time for her fourth point. In that fourth quarter, or in that first quarter, excuse me, Bella Lopez, six points. Peyton Kuhn with six points, and she had two three-point tries. And here goes Freeman, her shot no good. Great uh, mark out that time by Bella Lopez. And Peyton Kuhn was surprised always going for that basketball, but it's because Bella Lopez did such a great job of boxing out. That's a team box out right there, too. When you're boxing out, you're not worried about getting that stat with the rebound. Lopez's shot's going to be off the mark. Jojo Knight with the rebound. Great up and under, but she can't finish. And Kenton had the rebound, but now we're going to have a fight for the loose ball. It's going to be a jump ball. Possession arrow is going to favor. It looks like Elida. We don't have a great view from where we're at of the possession arrow. And with the scoreboard having the issues there, I'm not sure that I, I was trusting her. Here's Kuhn, she's gonna let another three-point shot go. That one's no good. Lopez chased down the rebound. Freeman gets along the baseline, immediately oh. has a double team. Somehow threaded that needle to Emma Mitchell. Emma Mitchell, great job catching that because she had some speed on that pass and then to finish to get the two points. It's a great pass, but my goodness, that was hard to catch. But a nice job by Mitchell, not just catching it, but finishing with ease. Back out to a 10-point Elida lead. Here's Weatherall. She has it poked away. Going to be a foul. We'll see who they call this one on. And that one's going to go on JoJo Knight. That'll be Knight's second. It'll be the sixth team foul on Elida. And no whistle that time. Ken lucky to be able to uh, keep that basketball. That one's going to be off the mark as Knight comes down with the rebound. Kuhn, Kuhn double team there. And he's trying to work down in that corner. And we're going to have a fight for the loose ball. And it's actually going to end up being a travel call on Kuhn as she lost her footing and rolled a little bit on the floor. So the tight defense from Kenton as they got over there to cause the issues pays off as they get the basketball back. And we're going to have a... We they, uh, Elida tried to get the late substitution in, but the official had already handed the ball off, so play will continue. Larrabee loses this one off her foot, gets it back in. Weatherall gets it. She's going to move back around. Yeah, this Elida defense really causes Kenton to rush things, making it really tough for them to dribble the ball around the perimeter and make good passes. That's a travel. As Kyla Bostader had come into the game and found herself free, but sidestepped there slightly after she caught the basketball. So travel call, easy call for the officials, and that's unfortunate she was able to get that shot to go down. Yeah, it's a tough one because she caught that ball on one foot and then jump stopped, so it technically becomes two steps. Freeman works right through the defense, puts this one up, no good. Bostader can't hold on to it, it's going to go out. And the officials say last touch by her. 5.31 left to go here in the half. Elida on top, 16 to 6. Addison Freeman going to take it out of bounds underneath her own basket. And she gets it out to Lopez. Lopez, shot fake, moves around the defense, almost got that one to go in. And it's going to be touched last again by Kent. So Elida getting a second, third, and fourth opportunity here on this possession. See if they can cash in. Yeah, just a couple loose balls that. Are it really could go either way. That's, that's too easy right there. You can't Kenton, fall asleep on the inbounds. And Kenton caught completely off guard that time. So Emma Mitchell gets an easy shot at the rim. And another turnover by Kenton. And Kenton is going to take a timeout as Coach Rothman wants to talk to his team. It's going to be a full timeout. We'll step aside as well and be back on WOSN.
Welcome back. Our scoreboard is presented by Web Insurance Agency, serving Lima and Allen County for more than 100 years with offices in downtown Lima and Bluffton. Kenton takes the time out as they have seen not a lot of good success these last about four or five possessions, really. You know, I mean, it's been the whole game, but specifically these last couple possessions, quick turnovers, bad shots, they haven't been able to hold on to it. As he lied, his defense has just been all over there. Absolutely, and there have been some calls that feel like they could have gone either way that haven't gone Kenton's way, and it seems like that might be getting them a little bit flustered as well. It's a big shot there. And that's a great play by Gabby Weatherill. Finally getting a turnover herself, goes down the floor, finds her open teammate as Allie Harple comes up with the three-pointer. Back to a nine-point lead, 4.50 left to go in the half. JoJo Knight with the basketball. Looking somewhere to go with it, drops it off to Kayla Hunter, who's come in for Elida. And we're going to have almost had another turnover, and then we're going to have a fight for the loose ball as we're going to have a push as Kyla Bostader Excuse me, just kind of fell that time as she was trying to go for the basketball and going to get called for the foul. So that is Kyla's first foul of the night. Team second. As Pate Kuhn comes back into the game, as does Leah Ramirez for Elida. And number 30, Macy Heckathorn coming in for Kent. Addison Freeman's going to take the basketball out for the Lady Dogs. She gets it into Bella Lopez. Lopez moves around to her right, trying to look, work through the screen. Does, comes back into the lane. Can't connect, but Emma Mitchell was able to save it, but ended up in the hands of Gabby Weather. This is a really big possession for Kenton. Coming off that three-pointer, you get a stop at one end. If you can get another bucket here, you start to really feel some momentum. Another three-pointer. Big shot by Allie Harper. And we said at the start of this game, Kenton can shoot the three-pointers. Elida knew that, but that time, or in the last two possessions, Allie Harple's been able to come free, and she has hit big three-point shots to make this a two-possession game. Basketball goes out of bounds. It is going to stay with Elida, as Peyton Kuhn now comes over to take it out. Lopez. Around the logo, gets it back over to Kuhn. And we're going to have another turnover. Larrabee pushes it up ahead to Weatherill. Weatherill goes into Ramirez. He's going to pick up the foul as Gabby Weatherill is going to make a trip to the free throw line. I think that's a smart foul right there. Make him earn it at the free throw line. Also slow things down a little bit so you can catch your breath. You've given up six straight points. You haven't had very good offensive possessions. And so just catch your breath. It kind of saves. Coach Jenkins a timeout. She might still take one here. Weatherill well, gets the friendly bounce, able to knock that one down. That's her first point of the night. Makes this a five-point game. Weatherill. Second shot is up. And it is good. And Coach Jenkins does want to take that timeout. It's going to be a full timeout. We'll step aside as well. We'll be back on WOSN. Back. Our scoreboard is presented by Web Insurance Agency, serving Lima and Allen County for more than 100 years with offices in downtown Lima and Bluffton. So Elida takes the timeout as they've seen their lead shrink to four points as Addison Freeman brings it up for the Lady Dogs. She tries to split the defense, able to keep her dribble, gets it over to Lopez. Lopez works back up and gets it off to Coon. So Coach Jenkins trying to yell instructions to her team to get them in position. She just drew up a play to try to attack this zone. We'll have to see what they end up doing. They have a four high look right here. They try to get a shooter in the corner, perhaps. Long pass over to Hermes. Quick pass to Lopez. Lopez back into the missile. Emma Mitchell does a great job with the shot fake that time. And, we have, and we're going to have another player from Kenton have to sub out because of blood. So the basket does count to make it 20 to 14. And Emma Mitchell, six points in the quarter, has all the points for this Elida squad. And that was a great heads up play. She had the shot fake comes up. She had, felt that defender. They had their hand on the basketball. She just pulled it back, let him go by, and get the easy two. Yeah, really patient play. I was actually going to mention that as well. She's only a freshman, but she does a really nice job staying composed with the ball. See, Larrabee tries to go reverse under the basket. 
but can't do it. Laramie must, I think, lost the contact. She looks over at Coach and asks for a timeout. And then she's going to commit the foul. And she's going to try to get her contact back in. So Kent right now having some medical problems. Two, two, <laughs> two players play. with blood and now a contact issue. And Larrabee was trying to play through it. Almost came up with a nice block there on Freeman, but a little bit too much contact on the follow through. She's going to say if she could have seen that better, she would have been all ball for sure. Freeman's a good play. first free throw is good. Madison Freeman with her first points of the night. It's a good job coming out and challenging Freeman, but she did a nice job splitting the two defenders up top as well. Can't let her get into the lane. She'll do some damage. 22-14, under three left to go here in the half. Nolting picked up her dribble, has to get up to Bo Stater. Freeman right there to push that one back. Great bounce pass to Lopez, and Lopez is a nice job finishing. Good finish, but again, Freeman is just all over the place, doing such a nice job. Got the steal, got the assist. Player on the line, so that's going to be a turnover. Weatherwell was able to uh, send a nice pass over to find Harpel, who was open for the shot. Allie Harpel readjusted her feet, and those heels went out of bounds. So you got to give a lot of credit to Coach Jenkins. That last timeout seemed to refocus her team as that lead had shrunk to four. Uh, they pushed it back out to 10 with a 6-0 run. Lopez off the mark there. Offensive rebound to Freeman, and going to be another foul. Let's see if this one goes on Larrabee as well. And that's actually not. It's going to be charged to Olivia Nolting. It'll be her first, and it'll be the fourth team foul for Kenton. As Freeman's first free throw is on its way, that one's going to be a little long. She's a 64% free throw shooter this season. Shoots five a game, makes about three of them. Second free throw is good. Nolte moves it up to Weatherill. Weatherill being patient, not just getting rid of it right away, is that he lied a defense and then collapse on her. Whether we're able to gather that one back in, Harple going to go baseline, has to go somewhere with it. We saw that happen to Harple earlier in this game as well. As she tried to go baseline, she just runs out of room as Evan Mitchell does a nice job of coming over and cutting that off and not picking up the foul, but not allowing uh, Harple or the, any other player to go any farther than that. Yeah, they're really trying to speed Elida up, or excuse me, trying to speed Kenton up right now by pressuring up top. That's a good take to the hole. Harple gets her own rebound, kicks it back out, Bo Stater. Gets into the lane, tries to go up, has it blocked by Mitchell, but Emma Mitchell's going to get whistled for the foul. Bo Stutter, only nine free throw attempts this year. She's made three of them. 33.33%, repeating, of course. You math, guys. I'm not a math guy. <laughs> Although my wife is a math teacher here at Bluffton High School, just one floor above us. Kyle's first free throw is on its way. And that one's no good. Dojo Knight coming back into the game for Elida as Evan Mitchell is going to take a seat. Minute 52 left to go here in the half. Elida on top, 11. Kyle Bostad are trying to make this a 10-point game. Shot is up and no good. Fight for the rebound, goes down to Freeman. Freeman with the basketball, moves it over to Ramirez. Ramirez fights through that defense, does a nice job trying to get to the rim. And this one will go on Larrabee, it'll be her second. It's a nice little Euro step right there, got the ball up high. Here Ramirez sends the first free throw on its way and it is good. Ramirez now has her first point of the game. Pushes the lead out to 12. Nate, my favorite thing after a Euro step is to look at the crowd, and it is generally the older crowd that is calling for a travel because they are just not used to seeing those Euro steps that well executed. It doesn't matter how long or slow those steps are. You get two of them, and so a lot of times they look awkward, and the default is to say, hey, that's got to be a travel, right? Covered a lot of ground without dribbling, but does a nice job with the defense. We're going to have a foul on the other end now. See who they charge this one to, as it's going to go on Leah Ramirez. So 
Ramirez gets fouled on the end, makes her two free throws, comes out on the defensive end and commits the foul. Gabby Weatherold's going to step to the free throw line. She has two, uh, two points in the evening as she made her last two free throws the last trip to the free throw line. Gabby's first shot is up and it is off. Gabby's a 58% free throw shooter this season. Second free throw is on its way. That one is good as well. A little hesitation got me. Gabby faked me out as well. Peyton Coon almost had that one taken away, but Olivia Knowlton reaches in there to try to poke it away. She's trying to plead her case to the official, saying she got all ball, but the official was right there, saw the contact, and Olivia Knowlton picks up her second foul. Ramirez in the lane, kicks it back out to Freeman for three. That one's going to be off. JoJo Knight with the offensive rebound and put back. JoJo Knight, right place at the right time, able to get that one back up. That's a result of three Bulldogs crashing right there. And one tip the ball. Knight was able to grab it, easy to put back. Peyton Coon that time forced some misdirection. She came flying in, trying to undercut that pass. It threw Weatherill off, goes out of bounds off of her fingertips. And he lined it down with an opportunity to stretch this lead. Here's Freeman, long pass over to Ramirez. As Kenton tries to come over with the trap. And Harpo that time didn't have her feet set at all as she came over to help. She's going to pick up the fouls. That will be her second. And that will put Elida in the bonus. So Leah Ramirez is going to go shoot the one and one. Ken good, did a nice job trapping right there, but what they didn't do well is keeping their feet set. They kind of went right into the offensive player, Leah Ramirez. Ramirez sends her first shot up, and it is good. Ramirez now three for three from the free throw line here in the quarter. As the last five, or excuse me, we have a stoppage of play as the officials are going to talk. There is. She's got blood on her, I think. As we had a couple of players with blood now, with blood on the jersey. We're going to have another stoppage. So we're going to have to have another switch. Kent had to do this earlier. Elida now has to do it. As number 32, Olivia Sanders, is going to come into the game. She has to check in at the table first, but she's going to have to come in and take this free throw. 100% from the free throw line so far this year. Curse of the announcer on the line. My reputation on the line as well. I hope she makes it just for my sake. I don't want anyone to get too mad at me. Letters can come care of Evan Skilleter if she misses this one. And yes. she nailed it. Flash. That is not an easy shot regardless of, of anything else. You have to come in completely cold, go to the free throw line. You already know everybody's watching anyway, but now you just have to come in and put one shot up. A great job by Olivia to get that one to go down. So 31-15, a 16-point lead for Elida. And now the officials talking again is maybe the... There might be some issue with the substitution now. Ramirez, I think, wasn't able to substitute at that moment. So Olivia's going to have to stay in the game currently for Elida with 48.6 seconds left to go. That one's going to go out of bounds. And now you'll be able to do the substitution with Ramirez coming in. Now she goes in. There we go. Another ovation for 32, Olivia Sanders, 5'5", five, five, sophomore. 31-15, Elida lead. Again, remember, not that long ago, this was an 18-14 game. Kenton had fought their way back within striking distance. A very timely timeout by Coach Jenkins. Refocused Elida, and they have exploded since then. We're going to have a foul on the loose ball as this one is going to go 
one. We'll see. And it's going to go on Allie Harple. That is going to be her third. So I imagine she's going to come out for this last 31 seconds. Can't imagine Coach is going to want her to pick up that fourth. And that's exactly what happens as Kenzie Spring comes back into the game. So Bella Lopez shoots the one and one. And the first shot is good. Bella Lopez having a nice game. Nine points here in this first half. And leaves that second one short. Rebound comes back to Hackathorn. Shot on its way by Spring. That one's going to be long. JoJo Knight comes up with the rebound, and now Elida's going to have a chance to take the last shot here of the half. Nolting challenges. Knight able to get it off to Ramirez, and we're going to have, I believe, a carried call by on Ramirez. And she looked like she had lost her dribble there for a second. The official there, though, gives the ball back to Kent. Yeah, not too sure what happened there. Kind of a broken play. Referee was right there to make the call. So, so we need to, to five seconds to left to go. Nolting going to have to try to find some space. Got to know what the, what the clock is doing. Hecathorn throws it up, and it's going to be after the final buzzer. So that is going to bring the first half to a close and a flurry on offense for Elida as they close on a big run to take the 17-point lead, 32-15. to 15. And That brings us to halftime. We'll step aside and be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Our scoreboard is presented by Webb Insurance Agency, serving Lima and Allen County for more than 100 years, with offices in downtown Lima and Bluffton. Here at Bluffton High School for tonight's sectional semifinal action between Elida Bulldogs and Kenton Wildcats. Third quarter underway here as Elida has the big lead, 32-15. This game was close. Nate Garland alongside Evan Skilleter. Uh, you know, Evan, they... Um, Kent found themselves down, found a way to get back into the game, but then Elida exploded to push this lead out to 17. Two fouls. Yeah, I'll tell you what, the Elida defense has been phenomenal. They've done a really nice job playing tough. That's a big three. It would have been great if it went in for Kenton, but they've been playing without Alexis Ward, who had two fouls early on for Elida, and so we'll see what her presence brings to the floor for the Bulldogs who have already been playing really great defense. And immediately you see Alexa Ward get into the mix there. She was able to tip around that rebound, ended up back in the hands of Freeman. Second chance not, did not go in, but Elida comes up with it one more time as Bella Lopez is going to be fouled. We'll see who they call this on as it's going to go on Gabby Weatherill. That's number one against Weatherill. Peyton Kuhn gets the inbound into Lopez. As Kuhn is going to call for the travel. She started going before she dribbled. So Kenton with the fortunate call that time, get the basketball back on the turnover. We'll see what they can do here with their first or second offensive possession of the half. Nolton. She's going to weave through some traffic, gets it off the glass, can't go down, but Larrabee there for the pullback, no good. As Hecathorn does a great job getting that basketball. There was a lot of traffic down there that she had to go through. Some contact that happened as well, but got it up for two. Yeah, it's a really nice fight down low. Looked like Freeman even got a hand on the ball right before the shot. So good job keeping possession and finishing. Here's Ramirez in the lane, has that one taken away. Harper. Gonna stop, pull that one back as Addison Freeman was right on her tail. Gets it over to Nolting. Nolting now. Gets it into Hecathorn. Hecathorn ran right into Addison Freeman, so has to pass it back out. Larrabee works against Ward. And I think right there you saw the effects of these two fouls by Alexis Ward as she just had to go straight up, wasn't as aggressive as we've seen her. And Hecathorn able to get that one in. Nolting right there just stepped right into the offensive player. Got a hand on the arm. 
Here's Ramirez. Gets it over to Lopez now. Did you see that? That zone for Kenton. They're trying to keep the ball out of the inside. And as Alexa Ward goes underneath the basket, the shooting get called for traveling. It's going to go back to Kenton. Ward's probably a little bit frustrated not being able to play many minutes in the first half. And it was a good move. Just a little extra half step right there. That one's going to be off the mark as well. Rebound comes down to Freeman. Here's Freeman on the inside, threw some contact, can't get it to go. Alexis Ward gets the rebound. She's going to get fouled, go to the free throw line to shoot two. Foul's going to get called on Sadie Larrabee. That is going to be her third. Looks like Ward's going to make her first trip to the free throw line tonight. Good patience from Ward right there, got the rebound. And I've seen it a couple times from Elida players. They'll get a rebound and they'll be nice and patient, letting the defense kind of go up or go by them. And right there, a defender knew that she was beat and just put an arm out and fouled Ward. Second free throw, no good as well. Rebound comes down to Hecathorn. 5.20 left to go here in the third. As Kenton's trying to find some, a spark here on offense, but they're going to say that it was tipped off the fingertips of, I believe, Alexis Ward is who the official was pointing at. But either way, Kenton's going to keep the basketball. It's been a decent start to this half. Lob touch did not work. Pushed ahead to head to Ramirez. Ramirez didn't even need her dribble, but a little bit too hard as it's going to go back to Kenton. And that foul is going to go on to number five, Bella Lopez. That'll be her first. And that is Elida's first of the half. See that pass to full court from Freeman between two defenders leading Ramirez to the basket. Not able to finish, obviously, but still, Freeman has such good vision. Freeman pushes up ahead to Lopez. Lopez not able to gather it in. Freeman comes over, tells her it's all right, we'll get this one back. But Kenton now is going to come back to it. And I think what's been more impressive about this Elida performance, on, especially on offense tonight, has been that Addison Freeman really hasn't been a vital part of the scoring. She only has three points. All of them have come from the free throw line. But plays like that have led to easy runouts and easy baskets for a team. Bella Lopez gets the layup, make it 34-19. And violation on the toss and it looked like the Kenton player Macy Heckethorn just stepped on or over the line before she released the basketball. So Lina with an opportunity here. And they get it from their under their own basket. Here's Freeman. Great, great inbounds play that time as Alexis Ward sealed off the defenders. Addison Freeman had a free look at the basket. That was a really good heads up play by Ward and she's going to get tackled with a foul I believe Two players in the vicinity. Yeah, it was Ward right there. She was in good position, but she started to move her feet as soon as that contact was made. If she would have just kept her feet planted, she would have either drawn a, a charge or just no call from the referee. So Olivia Nolting at the line, shooting two. First free throw is good. There's Olivia Nolting's first point of the afternoon. As Alexis Ward is going to have to go back to the bench with that third foul as you see Emma Mitchell come into the game. Emma Mitchell did a nice job in that first half spelling Alexis Ward. She had six points in the second quarter. And as you see Nolting's second free throw, good. Freeman kicks it back to Lopez. Extra pass into the corner. Ramirez is a three-pointer go. That one's long. But Freeman comes up with the rebound. That one's up the side of the rim. We're going to have a tie-up. And the jump ball, possession arrow will favor Elida. Not sure what all the commotion's about. They both went up and grabbed the ball. Definitely a hard possession. Kuhn from the corner. That one's going to be no good. Rebound somehow Freeman. When she passed that ball, she was on the complete other side of the court. Somehow managed to get back around in position to get that offensive rebound and get the two. It felt like a Dennis Rodman rebound where she was able to tell where that ball was going to hit the rim and she got right to the spot where it was going to carry him off. 
Eckethorn working through the baseline, steps out of bounds. Basketball's going to go back to the Bulldogs. See a Padroni's Pizza down in front of us. Wonder if we can place an order. What do you think? Yeah. You know what? I think you could. We get that next break. We get the phone out. Maybe we can even have it delivered. <laughs> Freeman with another offensive board. She has been so tough inside. Lopez leaves that one short. Hackathorn comes up with the rebound. We're going to have a foul. This one's going to go against Freeman. It'll be her second. <laughs> Three thirty-eight left to go here in the quarter. Kenton trying to draw close. Nolting goes through a lot of traffic to lay that one up off the glass. Really nice scoop layup off the glass. Good touch from Nolting, just a, a sophomore. Here's Freeman, works it through the lane, kicks it back out. Mitchell has to get rid of it. Coon's going to drive into the lane, puts up the shot, no good. Heckethorn comes up with the rebound. Nice job getting inside the defense. Obviously not the result they wanted, but that's exactly how you attack a zone. Heckethorn's going to let the shot go up. That one's no good. Coon comes up with the rebound. Lopez drops it off to Freeman, who lets the shot up and good. Addison Freeman warming up. She now has six here in the quarter. Going to have a timeout. This one's going to be a 30-second timeout by Kenton. So we will keep it here as we take a look at the brackets. Tonight's winner will go on to face the two-seed Brian on Saturday, following the other sectional final on Saturday, and that one will be Faustoria and St. Mary's. So the winner of tonight will have their hands full on Saturday afternoon, but yeah, this should be a good game. You know, if Elida does hold on to win this game, I mean, they, there's still a lot of game to play. We saw in the first game, comeback can happen. Man, where it found themselves down big, came back in the fourth quarter, uh, was almost able to come away with it as St. Mary's held them off. You know, but e Elida, with the way that they play, the speed that they play, the toughness that they play with, I mean, they can play with just about anybody. You know, that exact style of play is what helped them come up with that big victory against Bathroom this year. Yeah, absolutely. I would not want to play this team. Even if you end up winning, you're still going to leave with some bumps and some bruises. Uh, it's going to be a, a tough, tough win if you're able to beat Elida. But again, Kenton still a chance here. They're only down by 17 with plenty of time on the clock. And we've already seen Kenton able to make a run. They made it there in that first half. We'll see if they're able to do it again here in the second half. Heckethorn trying to go right into Ramirez. And she's going to be fouled as Ramirez comes down and gets the contact. Macy Heckethorn going to go to the free throw run. She has four points on the night and has yet to make a trip to the free throw line. Good job by Heckethorn backing her way down. And talk about patience all the time inside. And Heckethorn did a nice job. Ramirez took a couple swipes at the ball and eventually Heckethorn able to go up into contact and draw the foul for two free throws. First free throw for Heckethorn was good. Second one on its way. This one's going to be long. Last touch by Elida, and it will stay with Kent. Abby Weathero will trigger the inbound for Kenton. Multi's trying to direct traffic here. She's going to have to work through the double team. And we'll find Harkel. And down in the corner, she lets the three-pointer go. It gets up short. Jojo Knight with the rebound. Lopez almost lost her dribble, able to gather it back in and gets it to Freeman. Freeman, long pass to Coon. Coon's going to let it go. That one's good off the glass. Peyton Coon with her third three-pointer of the evening. The accuracy of that pass from Freeman right there was perfect. Hit Coon right in the chest. She caught it in the shooting pocket, was able to fire right away. Bank open late. Nolte trying to answer. That was no good. JoJo with another rebound. Knight gets it up to Freeman. She brings it up the floor. Here's Ramirez coming free into the lane. She pulls up, leaves that one short. Beckethorn with another rebound. Minute 30 left to go here in the quarter. 19-point game for Kenton. Trying to see if they can't close with some momentum here in the third. We're going to have a foul. As that is going to go 
That's going to go on Leah Ramirez. That is her fourth. So that is a big foul here towards the end of the quarter. Ramirez will take a seat, and Mitchell comes back into the game. So now Leah Ramirez and Alexis Ward both on the bench for Elida, but they are getting solid minutes out of both JoJo Knight and Emma Mitchell. A lot of depth on this Elida team. Doesn't matter who comes in, they're going to play hard, play tough defense, they're going to rebound. And move the basketball as well. Another real caught off guard with that pass, but able to catch it. She's going to move through almost as that one's going to go short. Harpin can't connect, but she says, no, I meant that. It was a pass. It's an assist for Harpin. <laughs> Sadie Larrabee right there to put that one in for two. Lopez trying to go inside to Mitchell. Mitchell has to get rid of it. Knight runs baseline, lets the floater go, no good. As she tried to take that one away from Nolting, she's going to pick up the foul. Good take from Knight right there. She didn't have a touch to finish, and then obviously trying to get her own rebound, she ran right into the player. I was able to grab it. It's her third. That is the 15th foul for Elida. Might be something Kent can try to exploit going into the fourth. Nolting, she's going to dribble through traffic, gets it off the glass. She's going to be whistled for. Uh, she, it's going to be whistled as a foul, excuse me. Yeah. That one is going to go against Knight. Knight looking confused, and that is her fourth foul. Uh, either way, Olivia Nolte going to the free throw line. Yeah, it's an interesting call there. If it was a foul, it seemed like it was on the floor well before the shot, but still picking up two free throws. Nolte hitting the first. Now three for three here in the quarter is Nolting from the line. Looking to go a perfect four for four. And she does. I hear Coach Jenkins from the sideline yell last shot as is going to try to hold this for the last 30 seconds. Freeman just going to watch the official unless Kent forces her a pass, which they do. Mitchell gets it right back over to her. Final 10 seconds of the third. Freeman going to drive, looking for somewhere to go. Gets it to Mitchell. Mitchell pulls up the free throw line. No good. Peckathorn comes up with the rebound, pushes up to Weatherwell. Weatherwell has to get rid of it. Had a good look, but can't get it to go down. After three quarters of play, Elida is on top, 43-28. We'll step aside and be back with the fourth quarter on WOSF. Welcome back. Our scoreboard is presented by Webb Insurance Agency, serving Lima and Allen County for more than 100 years with offices in downtown Lima and Bluffton. Fourth quarter underway here at Bluffton High School in the sectional semifinal. I'm Nate Garlock alongside Evan Skilleter. And Evan, you know, Alina, it's pretty much been on top and in control from the very beginning. Yeah, they really have. They've done a nice job, but I'll tell you what, Kenton did a really nice job in that third quarter, getting some buckets, also drawing some fouls. He lied with seven fouls here in the game, so that would mean Kenton at the line for bonus free throws, every foul going on. That's a nice roll from Freeman. And Freeman found herself wide open underneath, and she is not going to miss very often with that kind of run. Freeman all of a sudden up to 11 points. Had two in the first half, but has done a lot of really good work away from the basketball, outside of the scoring column, racking up assists, rebounds, steals, doing a lot for her team. Peyton Coon with nine, Bella Lopez with 11, Addison Freeman with 11. They're scoring very well spaced out for this Bulldog team. And it looks like Weatherall might have been out of bounds when that basketball came to her, so another turnover for Kenton. And we're gonna have a timeout. It's gonna be a full timeout. We'll step aside as well and be back. WOS Welcome back. Our scoreboard tonight is presented by Web Insurance Agency, serving Lima and Allen County for more than 100 years, with offices in downtown Lima and Bluffton. So Kenton taking quick time out here in the fourth quarter. Coach Bostelman not liking the effort, wanting to make sure his girls were ready for the stretch run here. Freeman works to the inside. Weatherall trying to work against her. 
Working off the screen with Olivia Sanders. She gets that one to go down for two. Sanders checked into the game earlier, made a free throw. Freeman pokes it away. Sanders hey. all the way up with the right hand. Back-to-back -back buckets by Olivia Sanders as this lead is back out to 21. Sanders making an immediate impact. Nolting misses that one. This one was partially blocked. The official right there says it's going to stay with the Wildcats. Harple lets the three-point try go. That one's off the side of the rim. Boom comes up with the rebound. Sanders gets it up ahead. She's going to pass this one off to She Coon. got space. Throw that one up there. Sometimes you just got to let the heat check go, but Sanders wasn't feeling that one, got rid of it. He line ends up turning it over. Harper brings it up for 10. Here's Weatherall. Has to get rid of it. Knowlton looking for some room. Getting just one timeout left. They're going to have to get going here. They're going to be able to stop the clock a whole lot. And going to have a kick ball that time. So we'll stay with Ken. 5.42 left to go here in the game. Kent with the basketball as Kuhn pokes that one away. Weatherall's going to look to drive. Tries to get into the lane. Goes through some traffic. They're going to say bobbled, so no whistle. But the shot's going to be no good. Lopez gets it on the run out. Pushes up ahead to Freeman. Freeman, what great body control. Almost had to come backwards to get that shot off. But got it to go down. Yeah, even more impressive to me. I think she was looking for contact from Nolting right there and didn't get the contact. And a lot of times it's really hard to adjust when you're expecting something and you don't get it in the air, but she's still able to finish with no problem. Olivia Sanders is going to pick up the call as Olivia Nolting is going to go back to the free throw line. She's able to connect on her first. Nolting, second shot is up. This one is good as well. Nolting, a great player, just a freshman. Sorry, she's a sophomore. She's done a really nice job tonight controlling things for Kenton. Nate Coon goes all the way to the basket. Can't get it to go down, but ended up at the feet of Emma Mitchell. He tries to put it up and gets fouled for a trouble. Speaking of young players having a nice night, Mitchell's done a nice job coming off the bench in the absence of Alexis Ward with all those fouls. She has five points, looking for six and seven here. First free throw by Mitchell is off. These two teams played way back in December, December 8th, right around the beginning of the season. Elida came away with a close victory, 59-54. As they have come in here tonight, and their defense has just, um, it just been really phenomenal. I mean, there's not enough good things you can say about what they've been able to do tonight. That's the ninth team foul against Elida there, so still one and one. Foul goes on Olivia Sanders again, as that will now be her second. Holton shoots 61% from the free throw line this season. Made her last two. Olivia now has made seven straight free throws. See if she can push that streak to eight. And she does. 20-point difference, 52-32, under five left to go here in the game. Freeman brings it up, gets it over to Mitchell. Mitchell with the shot. That one's good for Emma Mitchell. I love that Mitchell's able to extend the floor. She does a nice job inside, collects some offensive rebounds, plays good defense on the other end. But she's also able to step out. We've seen her take some mid-range jumpers. We've seen her take a three or two that haven't fallen, but still really good when your post player can step out and create some space. What a shot by Hackathorn. A little head fake at the three-point try, put it on the floor, went through some big contact, got that one to go in. And Elida, no hesitation, coming back the other way as Emma Mitchell gets two more points. Mitchell averages 2.4 points this season. She has 11. And a 
fight for that ball. It's going to go back to Elida. And we're going to have another timeout. This one is going to be a full timeout from Kent. We will keep it here, though. There's no admission fee to watch this game, but there's a cost for TV44 to broadcast it for you. Say thanks to viewer support in TV44 by sending them a financial gift right now. TV44 relies on the donation of viewers to enable the airing of this game and all locally produced programs. Donate now by visiting WTLW.com and click the donate button. We took a look at the bracket a little bit earlier where we revisited that now. Tonight's winner goes on to play Saturday at roughly 2.30 following the earlier uh, sectional final game as they will take on the two-seed Bryant. Bryant will come into that game with a record of 20 and two. You know, talking about tournament with girls underway, the boys side of the tournament will get underway next week. So much talk going on, especially in this area, with the new RPI rankings and how that has all come into play. It is an exciting time, an interesting time. It's interesting to see how some of those matchups worked out as well with those RPI rankings. Can you explain the RPI rankings to us? Not even a little. <laughs> I mean, <neither. laughs> you called me a math guy earlier. This just goes to show I have no idea what's going on. But uh, I've, I've watched sounds a couple like of, it's working. I've w watched a couple videos on the Martin RPI. You know, heard the explanations. This is going to be a travel violation. Basketball is going to go back to Kenton. Um, but that's why somebody else much, much smarter than me is figuring those rankings out. Under four left to go here in the game. Kent with the basketball. Olivia Nolting going to try to drive, goes through some contact, hits this one up, but no good. Freeman comes up with the rebound. Long pass up ahead to Sanders. Sanders, she's going to go put it off the glass. That one's no good. Weatherwell gets it. She's going to push the tempo. Gets it up to Harpel. We're going to have a collision down here on the floor. We'll see who the officials are going to call it on. As Weatherwell's slow getting up, and that's going to go against Freeman. Madison just picked up her third foul. And we are in the and one opportunity. Actually, it's going to be a two-shot foul, as that is now the 10th team foul for Elida. You got to give it Gabby Weatherall a lot of credit tonight. She has been very banged up. She's taken a lot of hard hits, but it hasn't slowed her down at all. She's played really well. I mean, this Elida team has been very, very tough to play against, and she's taken blow after blow, like you said, but has still stood strong, still playing very hard. Weatherall goes two for two on her free throws. She now has seven on the night. It is a 56-36 lead. Lighter runs a little weave up top. Ends up in the hands of Mitchell down in the corner. Long pass to Lopez. Looks like Elida right now not overly concerned with getting to the basket, just trying to milk some time off the clock. Nolting tries to close that defense a little bit, throws it away. Hecathorn looks for the drive, gets the finger roll off the glass, and good. Nice job running the floor that time by Hecathorn, and a nice finish. Yeah, really nice finish, actually, but around three defenders used those long arms to get the ball out ahead of her so it couldn't get blocked. Here's Emma Mitchell's shot. That one's going to be off. Hecathorn comes flying in, tries to get the rebound, going to go out of bounds off of her. And no timeouts left, so... Unless Elida takes a timeout, we'll probably see these last 248 go pretty quickly. Here's Mitchell down on the block. Gets it to Freeman. Freeman fights for all sorts of traffic. She's going to get fouled. And I believe this one's going to go on Weatherall. And it is. Just a 15 foul here of the half for Kenton. So was a shooting foul though, so Addison Freeman at the free throw line able to not knock down that first one. So used to seeing her hit those, you almost feel like it's automatic. Hobby Shield and Kinsey Spring checking in for Kenton. I imagine Coach Bostelman's going to be emptying his bench, letting his starters come out, let this Kenton crowd acknowledge them. As it looks like their season is going to come to a close here tonight. Nolte still playing hard, though. Nolte, finger roll off the glass, no good. There's Larrabee. 
Hecathorn comes in, puts it out there. Good hustle there from Hecathorn, getting that offensive rebound, putting it back. Only a sophomore. There's a lot of young players putting in some good minutes for Kenton tonight. Nolting just a sophomore. Hecathorn a sophomore as well. So I'll boss date her a little bit. She's a sophomore. Sanders works through the screen. Nolting comes out to play defense. Coon going to go baseline. Nolting comes out of nowhere, still playing hard, not ready for this one to be over yet. Knocks that one out of bounds. A couple more substitutions come in for Kent. Number 22, Maya Good. Number five, Camlin Hopkins. And number one, Kyla Bostader back into the game. Lopez gets it down low to Freeman. Freeman gets it up and off the glass. Right ahead to their bench as well. Madison Freeman now the leading scorer in the game with 16. Three point shot on its way. That one's going to be short. Rebound down to Kuhn. Elida's going to call the timeout so they can get the substitutions in. And we'll get all the numbers, see who all comes in once everything is settled here. As it looks like Elida is going to win the sectional semifinals. Move on to take on Brian Saturday afternoon. So for Elida, number 11, Jordan Gladden into the game. Number 12, Jelena Howard. Number 31, Addison Sneary. Number four, Kayla Hunter. And number 20, Tiana Jackson. Here's Hunter, works up top, long pass over to Jackson, but just out of her hands, the basketball's gonna go back to Kent. See number 11, Addie Haudenshield, that's come into the game as well for Kent. Haudenshield gets it up, has this one taken away. Howard gets the easy layup for two. 61-40. A minute left to go. Into spring. Going to go out of bounds. Basketball's going to go back to Elida. Good game for Elida. Again, we mentioned that at the top, but Tatum Miller, second leading scorer for Kenton, not able to play tonight. So certainly a factor when one of your best scorers is on the bench, but Elida played a really nice defensive game. They should be proud of their effort tonight. So that one is stolen by Sneary. Poke back away, gonna be an over the back court violation. So it's gonna go back to the Wildcats here with 33.3 seconds left to go. And you know, this is the first time that I've had an opportunity to see uh, Elida in person this season. And you just have to be impressed with them. You know, this is a team that it's kind of hard to believe that they're, they're a 10 and 12 record. Uh, you know, they, we mentioned the you know, winning record in the WBL. They had a huge win over Bath. This team, when they can play the style of game and they can dictate the pace and the physicality, this is gonna be a tough out. Yeah, absolutely. This is not a team, I, we mentioned it earlier, not a team that we, if we were coaches, would want to play against because no matter what the outcome is, it's going to be a really tough game. It's going to be, there's going to be a lot of bumps, a lot of bruises. It's going to be really hard to recover from a game like that. So, yeah, Elida, certainly a, a chance to make a little bit of a run with this hard-nosed defense. They can keep some scores against them pretty low. And uh, I'll tell you what, I, I would take a lot of these players on my team any day of the week, especially Addison Freeman and all she's able to bring to the table. Well, when you look at tournament play, you know, what are, the, what are a couple of the key things that we see out of every team that makes a deep run and pulls up upsets, right? A great defense and a superstar caliber player. And that's exactly what this Elida team has. They play great defense. They have a superstar player in Addison Freeman. She has great players around her as well. That is a recipe for a team that is ripe for an upset, and they're going to get that opportunity Saturday afternoon against the 2C Bryant. Yep, watch out for these Bulldogs. And like you said, Addison Freeman, a tough player to defend, a tough player to watch for, and Elida certainly poised for a, a potential upset coming up here on Saturday. 
So that is just going to about wrap it up for us here at Bluffton High School. I'd like to thank our sponsor, Web Insurance, as they were our scoreboard sponsor tonight. And we appreciate our crew as well doing everything for us, working the cameras, working back in the studio, doing all the editing. They do all the hard work. All we got to do is come on here and talk about basketball. So one final time from Bluffton High School, the Elida Bulldogs take home the win in the sectional semifinals as they knock off Kenton 61 of 44. We appreciate everybody for tuning in tonight. You've been watching girls high school basketball on WOSN. Have a great night, everybody.